Hey there guys, Shane here from Figatech 3D Printing and today I'm checking out some yellow TPU from 3D Printing Canada. Welcome back guys. So 3D Printing Canada has hit me up and asked me to test out a few types of their filament and this is the next one we're going to test out and this is their TPU in dark yellow. Uh, it's a super plain just brown box. 3D Printing Canada sticker right here. Here it tells you it's TPU, 1.75 millimeters, dark yellow, a SKU code, uh, recommended the nozzle 220 to 240, and the bed 70 to 85. 75 to 85 on the bed. Let's get this open up. And we have their spool, same two stickers, 3D Printing Canada, detail sticker. It is a non Ziploc bag, very nice and tight though, so it has a good vacuum seal on it. So it hopefully should be pretty dry. That's kind of issue I've had with a lot of the flexible filament I've received lately. It's only dry for about one print on the uh, printer. And then I have to run it through the dryer just because it has absorbed so much moisture. That's kind of upsetting. I have a hair right here. It's driving me crazy. Dog on kids. Full size silica pack in there. And then there's the spool. Uh, it does have a saran wrap. On the filament here still, where's the opening? There we go, it's just one to keep that. It's a, you know, decent wind, pretty fairly tight. Really wanna see how actual like, oh, this is a, I would say this is like a medium, a medium flexible. It's not, I mean, it's pretty flexible. It's not super flexible. The Make Shaper stuff I tested before, super flexible. This stuff is pretty tough. Ooh, yeah. That's got some pretty good stretch and that's got some pretty good elasticity to it. That went almost back to normal size, wow. All right, well, we're gonna have to print this on some direct drive printers. So if you don't know that, uh, TPU flexible filaments print much better on direct drive extruders. That means the extruder and the hot end are basically one piece. The extruder feeds directly down to the hot end and it starts printing. A Bowden style printer is a extruder that's offset somewhere on the printer. There's a great big Bowden tube, a PTFE tube that leads down to the extruder and then gets pushed out. You have a lot more driving force behind a direct drive extruder and especially for flexible filaments because these have to go around the gear where the gear is to push these in. And it has a tendency to get kind of jumped up. And that's because normally most Bowden extruders have gaps in them. Unless you're using like a Titan extruder or some other type, but there are usually a lot of gaps in them. A lot, especially all of the cheap printers. Any of the crowdies have gaps in them, and they're not really suitable for a fairly flexible filament off the bat. You have to print out a different extruder to go on top of the motor, or a little adapter to kind of go in there, kind of help your PTFE tubing get as close to the gear as you can. So say this is the gear. You want your filament as close to it as possible so it's only interacting with the filament as it's crossing it here, but your Bowden tubes are right here close and it just pulls it straight along and through. That ensures that it goes out of the tube to the gear, right back in another tube and to the extruder without bunching up anywhere. There's less room for error basically with that. Now I personally like to print my flexible filament on direct drive extruders. I have that on the GTEC i3, the FT5, and the Forgetech 2020 i3. Those are my direct drive printers. Everything else I have is a Bowden style extruder. It can be done, it's a little more difficult. You have to print a lot slower when you do that, in my experience, but it can be done most of the time. Either way, we'll throw this on a couple of the direct drive printers and see how this turns out. I might try one on a Bowden style, but probably not. Uh, either way, it's a nice yellow, I have to say, compared to my shirt here, very nice yellow. I almost wish I could print a flexible Pikachu. Hmm. I'll be right back with some prints. Let's see how this stuff comes out. Okay, now with printing with the flexible filaments out there, it's, it's an uphill battle, in my opinion, uh, to get just the perfect settings, to get everything working just right. I had some kind of colossal issues, and then I had marginal success, then I had some great success once I finally got things moving along. So this is less about all what can I print with it and more about what did I learn with this particular filament on going through the process. Now I printed almost about, I'd say about a third of the roll and I stopped it there because I got to where I was getting good prints. And flexible filament takes such a long time to print and I only really have two direct drive printers that I can print this with right now. So it takes up a lot of my time on those printers to print like a litany of 
models with this. So I figured now that I have it tuned, I can kind of walk through that with you. So let's take a closer look at these models. All right, so model number one is my Fugitech 3D printing maker coin. And you can see there's issues with this. You can see the top layer is not fully filled in. You can see that the it's a bit under extruded all around. The There's definitely not enough infill in there or top layers. The support uh, comes off easily enough, but once we it's fused so much because I didn't put enough layers on, it actually is going to pull part of the layers away with it. So the first layer went down fantastic. As you can see, very nice and solid. It just went down great. It was just failure from there. So what I learned from this print was I need to up my extrusion multiplier more than I have for other flexible filaments. I need to add more walls. I was trying to do two to see if that would work out and that did not. Uh, then I was trying to do only three top layers. That did not work out. I need to do four. And then I need to tune my retraction just a little bit more as you can see there's a little bit of stringing there and it's a little bit rough up here from retractions. So we'll go on to the next attempt before I get to like final ones. Okay, so here is attempt number two. And if you just look from here, it's a great print. It's going up real nicely. It's a vase mode, three bottom layers. It's going up. The flexible film is not really meant for vase mode, but I do it kind of just to kind of be sure that I have my settings right on it. And you can see we start to see issues and they just escalate, escalate until they get absolutely catastrophic. Just absolutely horrible up here. Lots of issues. Now, I'm not 100% sure this was my settings or the filament was just getting too much moisture in it, which is probably what happened. And then if you look in here, all these strings from running the fan a little too high. So I learned here that I need to print slower, I need to dry the filament, and I need to lower my fan setting because it was just blowing too hard and it was actually pushing the filament away so it wasn't extruding properly. Look at all that. I mean, it feels like hair on there. So we're getting a little better, but still had issues in it. All right, then we have this Moai guy, uh, and he turned out fairly well. He's still nice and soft. So it's a 10% infill with two perimeters, four bottom and four top layers. So up my bottom top layers a little bit, but I left the walls at two, but I'm extruding a lot more than I was for this initial uh, you know, uh, coin that I made. So things were coming up better. He did really well here on the overhangs. I probably need to slow down a little bit more. Still going a little too fast on here. I did lower my fan a little too much. I think I was running at 60% on this one. 80 ended up being the sweet spot for this filament without stringing it along. But it did fairly well through the different hard angles, which is the chin, the nose, and the top of the eyes here, the eyebrow area, the brow. But other than that, it was pretty good. And there's always gonna be a little bit of variation in there because it does move, but he is fairly squishy, you know, with only a 10% infill. And I can push real hard and he's not, not breaking any of the, uh, the walls there. I did, oh, I just broke a little bit right here. Um, but it was much better, we're getting somewhere. So then we come to this companion cube and it looks Really good, actually. Little issues here on the cooling for the corners. That happens. Uh, this was still low infill. I, I should have upped it for this one. I would have been in business. But it's with four bottom layers and crap. Four top layers. But with only a 10% infill, four top layers was not enough. If I would have done 15 or 20% infill, four would have been fine. There's just too much space between the, fat, the honeycomb. If I would have done maybe rectilinear, Maybe it would have come up better, but I'm a fast honeycomb infill person. I like it a lot. So from the side, beautiful print. From the bottom, beautiful start. Top, ah, oh, just totally lost it there. But we're learning more. This is actually with three walls on this one, so it's much sturdier. You know, even though it's 10% infill, the walls are much more substantial. That's why the sides came out so much better. But you have infill problems on the top because low infill, low amount of top layers, this is what happens. So we're getting somewhere, so let's try a Benchy now. And I think my settings are a little bit more tuned and we'll see how it goes. So this is the little 100% Benchy scale that I did. I meant to do a 200% one, but I totally forgot uh, when I was prepping this. But we started out really good. I mean, really good layers down here. And then something got caught. Um, I don't know exactly what happened here. I think it just curled up and then something must have got caught on the nozzle there. And it just totally jacked this up and then it finally made its way off. 
But again, not enough top layers. This was only three for some reason. I don't know why I didn't change it to four, but the print was already finished. I went back and confirmed my settings. Yes, it was three top layers. Four would have been better because I did 15% infill on this, so it definitely would have been a better print. Um, the bottom on this one, um, you can barely feel. I guess I had it smushed pretty good on there. You can barely feel the CT3D XYZ on the bottom and the benchy on the back is very um, hard to see. But again, we made some progress on this. We had some pitfalls. The stack just turned out really bad. Uh, I think I need to slow this one down again. This was a 40 millimeter a second on the 2020 i3 with an aero extruder. 30 millimeter a second ended up being a lot better. All right, so you saw the vases. So let's try something different. Let's try a little flexi bracelet. So this is one that I printed before in other filaments, and this came out pretty good. The first, I guess, like half or three quarters turned out well. I did have some uh, missing spots in here, which I had with the black flex cylinder that I had from Kodak. It's just because it prints like this and the nozzle is so close, it heats the other layers up so much, like there's so much heat still staying there. You'd really have to slow this down and turn your fan up to about 80, 90% in order to cool the filament properly. But it comes back to shape very easily, very quickly. So I'm happy with that. Um, you know, it's, it's just a simple little bracelet you could have, and it mostly turned out good. So I was getting definitely better results. All right, so we fast forward a little bit more, and here we have a flexible filament maker coin. Came out really, really nice. The three walls, four top, four bottom, at a 15% infill. And if you look at the bottom, I actually forgot to do support on this one and I'm not disappointed for how well it came out. I wish I would have just so I can kind of see what it's like to feel it off, but a little sagging on those points, which is obviously going to happen. Other than that, great, great print. Very happy with it. It did really well on all of the cogs here as they roll up. Very good job there. Top layers look great. It is still fairly flexible. Uh, it's a little less flexible than I wanted, but this is what it took to get good results with this filament. And finally, the the final print that I did on this was the Mario uh, Star. I didn't print the black PLA eyes for him yet, but he is a flexible filament. I did make him a little sturdier. I kind of wanted this for our little tree that we have for our s'mores. We collect those little guys. And uh, the kids knock that tree a bunch. I have a PLA, um, one of these for it. And it ended up, you know, getting pretty dinged up this past year. I figured this, if it falls off, it won't be too bad because it's flexible filament. I'll just glue in some black PLA eyes and we'll call it a day. But it is still fairly flexible. We can see how much it's going to change here. This is four top, four bottom, three perimeters with a 25% infill. I probably should have went 20%, but that's okay. This was a very good learning journey through this filament uh, being a cheaper uh, TPU. So, but I, I really like the end all results that I came out with were just really, really nice. So the filament is good quality. It's just when you're tuning in on multiple printers, a new filament, there are things you have to consider. Things are not going to stay, you know, printing. I mean, I had, this was a good, a good 60% was really good. Then all of a sudden some moisture got into it and it just went to crap. So flexible filament is super hydroscopic. It's going to absorb moisture like crazy. And now that it's summer and I'm running the air conditioner, more moisture is being introduced into my shop down here. So I'm having kind of issues with that. I have to keep putting the food dehydrator right here is constantly running lately with nylons and with flexible filaments in there to keep them nice and dry so I can throw them in a bag and then pull them out of the bag and start printing. I'm going through a lot of desk impacts as well. So it's something really to consider on your climate when you're printing flexible filaments, you know, what you need to do. I really need to, to print off one of those enclosures that I can close this in with a bunch of desk impacts in there so I can print without worrying about moisture getting to it. Uh, I'll just have to dedicate that to one of my machines. So sometime in the future, I'll probably end up doing that. But I can say I really did like this filament. Once I got good prints, these are excellent. I would print with this stuff all the time. This quality is really close to like the Make Shaper Flexible that I have, but that's $92 a roll. This stuff is quite a bit cheaper than that. So if you can get near quality uh, prints with cheaper filament to the more expensive stuff, then that's a good sign. That means your settings are tuned in the right way and you're going the right direction. So yeah, I'm happy with this. I'm happy with the color. I'm happy with how it turns out. Like once I got it tuned, I 
you know, like I said, I cannot be disappointed in this. You know, this is my learning time. When I get these new filaments, I, I use it as learning time, I should say. And that way I can try new things out and see, you know, what's gonna work with this and what's not gonna work with this. So I'm happy to have it. And I wanna thank 3D Printing Canada for sending me this filament to try out. It does work really well and I'll make sure that to add some of my settings down below might help you guys a little bit more with printing with this I did have to set my extrusion multiplier higher than normal for flexible filament I think I'm at a 1.5 for this one one or 1.05 I normally print at like 1.01 it doesn't seem like a big difference but it is quite a bit uh, when you're dealing with the flexible filaments so if you guys enjoyed the video, kind of learning what it is you have to troubleshoot or how I troubleshoot through prints, you know, when I'm working on a new filament and I go through the different tasks of doing things. Yes, you can do those simple little prints. I prefer to do more practical things. Just my opinion on it. Uh, temp towers work half the time, but I had the temperature right on this. It was just getting all my other settings tuned in there. But if you guys enjoyed that process, please give the video a thumbs up. And then if you didn't, thumbs down. Either way, leave me some comments down below uh, on it. If you guys wanna stay in tune with what's going on, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon, you get email notification when I upload new content or I do my weekly streams. If you guys wanna swing financially on a monthly basis, down below is a Patreon link. You can donate to me there and thank you my current Patreons. If you wanna donate me uh, like a one-time deal, there's a Streamlabs tip and a buy me a coffee down there. You can send me some money to buy some stuff for my channel. Or if you just wanna use my affiliate links, you can update your bookmarks. There's a whole slew of links down below, Amazon, eBay, AliExpress, things like that. Do your daily shopping with those and a little slice of what you buy comes back here to help me at the channel at no cost to you. So I thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, happy printing.